Hi guys, I will be speaking about the HMT watches from India today. HMT was first set up in 1953 in Bangalore. The then Prime Minister of India, Mr. Nehru, went on a visit to Japan and he was presented a citizen watch. He was so excited to get the watch that he came back to India and he said that he wanted to bring in a sense of time consciousness within the Indians. So he set up the first watch manufacturing unit in Bangalore. The watch unit in Bangalore was set up in collaboration with Citizen and it was inaugurated by the late Mr. Nehru. It became so popular in the coming days that it became a household name in almost all Indian families. The second factory came in 1972 and the third one also in 1972 in Srinagar. This was followed by the Tunkur and the Rani Bagh in 1978 and 1985. Actually, the Tunkur unit was the first one to set up quartz watches. Initially, the cases and the watch movements were imported from Japan, but gradually in the HMT manufacturing units, the cases as well as the 17 jewels and the 21 jewels movements were made. The HMT 02017 jewels movement became very popular and was put into most of the HMT watches at that time. The most popular watches at that time were the Janata, the watch for the common people, then came Kohinoor, Jawaha, Pilot, and so many others. Here is a glimpse of the HMT Bangalore factory, which was set up in 1961. This was inaugurated by Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru. As you can see in the picture over here, Jawaharlal Nehru was there, inaugurated in the factory. So when I decided that I will do the review of an HMT watch, I had no doubt in my mind that I should start with the HMT Jawaharlal. Coincidentally, my very first HMT watch was also a Jawaharlal. So without much ado, let's start on and see what is the watch in hand today. As you can see, I have put the HMT Jawaha on a grey black NATO strap. It looks really very really cool. Uh, the original strap which I have got in the watch, and I will show you it later in the video, it was very old and it was torn, so I thought about replacing it with this nice NATO strap. As you can see, the watch immediately reminds you of the 60s and 70s Redos. At that time, this kind of case was very, very common in the market. Uh, the dial is a golden one and it has silver colored hands, the Davos and the Mint hands and there is a very thin second hand. As you can see, the numbers are not there but you have very nice kind of uh, pointers over there in the places. As you can see, the side of the watch is very thin. The case is very thin, it's, it's nice on the watch. The sides are really polished well. This is a watch from 1970s and as you can see the condition is very good. I got this watch from one of the guys in Kolkata who bought it from an auction and as you can see the condition of the watch is really good. Let's pick up the movement over here. As you can see the movement is an HMT 0 to 0 17 jewels movement. The movement is actually based on a Citizen Caliber 0 to 0 1 and is a handled movement with 17 jewels and it has kind of a pilot lever with clockwise here spring key. As you can see over here, the watch is really thin. The case looks typically like an old vintage case from most of the watch manufacturers at that time. Redo, Rolex and partially citizen. The Avinash which I have in my hand is a quite newer watch than this Joha. And as you can see, the cases by that time had evolved and it looks a bit different in that way and 60s there's also this Kohinoor over here this also came into picture in the late 70s and 80s I think and that's why the cases look quite a bit different from the early 60s and 70s watches actually this one is from 1975 this was the original band which I got from the watch uh, sorry for the reflection of light over here guys as you can see uh, it was it's a it's, a, it's not in very good condition uh, but I have no regrets it's quite an old watch and if you see the bracelet it reminds you of kind of the jubilee bracelet from the Seacos and the old Rolexes it's very flimsy it kind of rattles in the hand but it looks very nice and it's also very comfortable to wear as you can see, it's a very thin uh, stainless steel sheets which have been rolled to make this uh, dial. 
I rather kind of prefer this NATO strap with this kind of vintage watch watches. I have a thing for NATOs and as you can see, uh, let me show you how it puts on my wrist. As I told you, it's a very thin watch. It sits ni nicely on your wrist. Very thin and it really goes on with this kind of NATO. Okay, like I said that I will show you the case back. Let me get rid of the NATO first. Yeah, I put it on a bit tightly. Uh, let me just get rid of it fast. Yep. So, uh, this is how the bear watch looks like in hand. Like I told you, it's a very small kind of... So, HMT used to walk, make very small watches at that time. Uh, most of the watches were in the range of like 34 to 40mm. They were not not anything beyond 42 at least as far as i know as you can see over here uh, the condition of the watch is really good like there are fine hairline scratches here and there and this was the kind of like standard case back at that time from hmt as you can see stainless steel uh, it was from 1401 1975 it says that it's shock proof like i told you it's 17 gills automatic so case actually is in very good condition considering that is almost like a 45 year old watch uh, the dial is still in very good condition though it has some scratches here and there I need to probably refurbish it a little bit and I will show you once I do a kind of polishing of the case and also I do a cleaning of the movement I will put a tutorial video over there whenever I get some time but honestly, I got in love with the watch when I saw it. it. I spent, I think I spent almost like 1500 rupees for the watch, which is peanuts, considering the kind of value it holds right now. It's a 45 years watch in running condition. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's a bit rusty. Like I, as I told you, I need to service the watch. Uh, the, mo the movement is really nice. It doesn't jiggle much. Uh, is very light around like 65 grams when I last weighed it but it's a very light watch and it, and it sits nicely on your wrist so let's do one thing like uh, let's take the measurements of the watch and tell you how it how it will fit in your hand okay so let's start with the measurement let me take out my vernier scale so this is a vernier scale which I normally use to take the measurement of the watch. I will show you the case thickness, the lug to lug width and also the strap width so that you can know what kind of strap actually fits the watch. So let's start with the, the strap width. It's 16 mm and normally for most of the HMT watches is always 16 mm. The net of strap which I put in on this watch is actually a 16 mm one. Uh, the case thickness, like I told you, it's a very thin watch. Uh, even with the dome case, glass case, actually an acrylic case, uh, it's still 5 mm at the max. And the overall lug to lug width should be around 39 to 40 mm. As you can see, it's around uh, 40 mm, and HMT watches were mostly around from 34 to 40 mm in most of the cases. So a very thin watch, very very nice watch if you have a thin wrist, and it fits very nice on your wrist. And unlike some of the later watches from HMT, uh, like Kohinoor, which is not still still not that bulky but still i think it's a bit thicker than the jawahars uh, like you see it, you can put on any 16 mm uh, band straps over there uh, the old band strap like i told you i already removed it and i put it on the netto and it looks really really, really nice over here please tell me in the comment section do you like this netto strap or not or and what kind of strap will you use to actually put it on the watch so guys thanks a lot for viewing the video please let me know in the comment section what did you like 
and here's a bonus clip of me donning this beauty thanks a lot guys see you in the next video